Hi, I'm Rick Snyder. We've talked about this forever. Pizza and pigskin tours, where we eat pizza. We walk around and see a little bit of historical sites and all that. Well, it's finally happening. You can go to my website, monumentalthoughts.com, and see where uh, you know, how you can get tickets. Um, the tickets do uh, include the price of pizza and not alcohol drinks. You pay for your own beer. But we're going to walk around Georgetown, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes. I'm going to show you a lot of cool stuff. Then we're just going to sit and talk and eat pizza and, and whatever you want to ask, I'll talk about as long as they don't get me in court. So make sure you come and see the pizza and pigskin tours uh, at monumentalthoughts.com, and I'll be eating pizza with you soon. Episode of the Hogsty. It is your host Alex East with you. We got the full crew here, Jamal and Steve, and we are champing at the bit to talk about this uh, final game of Washington versus Baltimore. A fun-filled, action-packed, exciting game where millions of points were scored by the offense and none by the defense. Oh wait, that's the opposite of what happened. Th- that would be Baltimore. Yes, that was Baltimore. Baltimore had fun. Washington sh- didn't even bother to really show up, it seemed like. I was offended that I had to watch this game. Yeah. I was literally like, I'm offended. And, and I think the players ought to be ashamed of themselves. The coaching staff ought to be ashamed of themselves. Everybody associated with the Washington Redskins with this game ought to be ashamed. They didn't show up. They didn't care. Even the players who were fighting for jobs didn't care. We'll talk about this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have a whole lot of problems with what happened, and, and I was offended that I was forced to watch it. We did it for you, so you didn't have to. Well, that, that separates the the dedicated uh, podcasters and people who want to cover the team versus versus those who only want to cover them when they're happy. <laughs> we we do the good, the bad, the <laughs> ugly. We do it all, so it That's is right. what it is. Right, and, you know, I, I, I'll say this. Watching the game live, and I was, you know, on social media watching, it was more interesting to discuss the macaroni and cheese in the press box than it was to discuss the game on the field. Because if, if you watched what was going on on Twitter, all the reporters I are, didn't. like, tweeting pictures of macaroni and cheese that they're eating <laughs> and, <laughs> rather than talking about the game. It was that mac bad. Mac and cheese. Yeah. And it well, didn't look the like, mac and by the way, it good. didn't look like good mac and cheese. It looked oh, like, right, well, you know, craft. Deluxe craft, maybe, but that's about it. That's good stuff, man. I like craft mac and cheese. Are you kidding me? Yeah, well, for I mean, those it, who, for those who are listening to Steve, clearly, if you listen long enough, you know that you can't trust Steve anything outside of the microwavable stuff. <laughs> so, so, so if he's talking about <laughs> if he's talking about craft, then you know you know where you're at. <laughs> you know where you're. I'm at. talking about those little cups. They sell individual cups. You put water in them. You microwave them for know. three minutes. It's <laughs> we all know. Yes. We we all eat it, but we don't pretend that it's the best mac and cheese in the world. <laughs> it is. Oh no, I don't eat it. I don't eat it. I, I didn't. I got spoiled okay. by my family. <laughs> well, it, let, let's be honest. There's also a African American cultural thing about like good mac and cheese baked and homemade from scratch, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's a thing. Yes, we take our time. <laughs> We yeah. take our time and look forward to it. And you take it. it seriously. Yeah. I generally think there's no point in doing anything if I can't if, if can't be microwave. I can microwave I it in a third of the time. That's crazy. <laughs> Blessings to you. At least get an air fryer, Steve, please. Like, that's all you need, if anything. Because you can Forming treat it like grill, a microwave. Something. Yeah, like, just get an air fryer. You know what I'm saying? Treat it like a microwave. You know, it's in the house. You don't have to grill. You don't have to do anything extra. You just put your food in there. 10, 15 minutes is done. I have to clean it, and it takes five times longer. It doesn't take five <laughs> times Jamal's longer. shaking his head. I wish you could see the look on his face, everybody. <laughs> look, I want to I, – I, this is a case. This is a state a game. I want to do the stats. I'm going to force all okay, everybody to Okay, all right. Why don't stats. we get into the game first, and you can talk about these terrible stats. Um, I, I want – because I, I want to make you guys suffer. All right. Okay? All right. Okay, so Kyle Allen was 10 for 22 for 100 yards – a quarterback rating of 58.9. Mm-hmm. Steven Montez was a tiny bit better. 
from a percentage basis, right. he was only five for ten, so he was at fifty percent. For 28 yards. Quarterback rating of 56.3. Our leading rusher was Jonathan Williams, 5 for 26. Peyton Barber was Peyton Barber, 4 for 12. Steven Montez, 3 for 8. Jarrett Patterson, 2 for negative 1 yards. Our leading receiver on the day, Antonio Gandy Golden, 4 for 39. Dax Millen, 3 for 36. Jared Patterson, 3 for 15. And a bunch of other guys had a catch or two. Yeah. Had a catch. And then on defense, Jordan Kunachik. The 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 broadcast crew was saying Kunachik, I believe. Yeah, so I, I don't know if it's Kunachik or Kunachek, what whatever it is. They have the team usually sends out pronunciation guides, but they'd only do that during the regular season. So we'll have to wait. Yeah, assuming if he makes a roster at least. Daryl Roberts, you know, nine tackles, and you know, look, there's a bunch of other stats. But here's the one I really wanted to get to. We're doing a Tressway guessing game, okay? Mm-hmm. Now the guess the guess we isn't did Tressway out punt the whole offense? Of course we he obviously did. know he did that. The the question I have for you is did he double the offensive production? Oh, double can you tell me how yes, many punts he, he had? He had eight punts. Yes, then he absolutely doubled the offensive production. Jamal, do you have a guess? Well, given that Washington was out gained by nearly three hundred yards against uh the Ravens, I think he doubled it. I think that'd be he might have tripled it, yes. honestly. <laughs> no, he didn't triple it. So he was eight for 354 yards. And our total offensive production, 128 yards passing, 45 yards rushing, that's 173 yards. So if you double that, if you double that, that's 346. So he outpunted, he doubled the offensive production by nine yards. <sighs> so there's your trust way. <laughs> That's your trust way stat for the day. <laughs> and just for a con- and for the sake of contract, and that, that's just pathetic. It it's is. It's the most pathetic thing I've ever heard. Just for the sake of, of contrast, um, the uh, Baltimore passed for 308 yards, rushed for 183 yards. Uh, Tyler Huntley was 24 for 33 for 285 yards. <laughs> and Lamar Jackson was 3 for 4, you know, in his brief time in the game. Um so there, and, and rushing wise, it was Nate McCrary, sixty-eight yards. Receiving wise, somebody named Benjamin Victor had eight, five receptions for eighty-five yards. Mm. It goes down from there. But the real story of the day is that Trent, Tressway doubled the Washington's offensive output. So there you go. That's stats. That is that is frustrating right there. Um, <laughs> and, and you know, this whole game from the outset felt like a comedy of errors in that. Uh, First off, I think we, we kind of all talked about how we assumed they were going to play some of the starters just to get some rhythm down. None of the starters played. Hell, they even didn't play Heineke. I think there were even a lot of number twos who they held out of this game. Cam Sims didn't play, unless I'm mistaken. Yeah, yeah. I didn't see Cam Sims in the game at all. I was honestly surprised when Patterson went in for two or three runs or whatever it was. You know? Nah, he needed I, I he think needed Ron to Rivera's... Patterson yeah. needed to play. yeah. I think Ron Rivera ought to be ashamed of himself personally. I mean, this offense has played six, has has had six drives right. over the course of two quarters in two games, essentially. The starting offense we're talking about. And they looked horrible in every one of those drives, basically. Didn't, you know, they scored three points. And, you know, we're lucky to do that. And there's a week off in between, mm-hmm. you know, so they won't have played. They basically haven't had a preseason in, to any any significant effect. I I, had, I I was hoping they would play three quarters, personally. I don't know what Ron Rivera was thinking. I, I mean, here's my thing. I, I thought that, and I, I've, you know, I said this before the start of the preseason. The second to last game should always be your dress rehearsal, not the last one. They should have played a more probably in that Bengals game, you know, looking back on it now. If you were going to do it... If you thought they needed more time, you should have given them the whole half in the Bengals game and then benched them this week. That, that I would have been fine if that was the case. But, you know, it, it, it is frustrating that I think we're, we got some serious uncertainty on the O-line and none of it got resolved this week now. So that that's annoying to me. I'm less worried about Fitzpatrick. He had an off game. You know, like, we know he's volatile. You know, like, he'll have bad days and he'll have good days. Fitzpatrick uh, is going to Fitzpatrick. Yeah. Um, I, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I did think, um, <laughs> I think that the starters, I think Ron Rivera did himself a disservice. Um, I understand, like, I'm not going to sit here and fight over the decision. Like a decision is a decision. It is what it is in that regard, in that respect. But when you talk about personal opinions, um, I think he did himself a disservice not playing these guys. 
obviously health is important but if you think about it and we're actually I, i've actually seen people today talking about how john harbaugh's decision to to win a preseason game cost jk dobbins possibly a season i don't disagree i mean I, I i disagree with that i don't agree with it at all because uh the the goal is to get your players ready for the season any player can get hurt anytime you put them in the game and jk dobbins didn't get hurt off a dirty play he got hurt because he was running the football and and, and to circle this back to washington because uh this is the the most important factor when you when you want to get these guys out healthy like you should think about that mindset from week one to week three, guess who didn't start their key guys because they didn't want them to get the risk injury and they're just ready to get uh, they're just trying to get ready for the regular season. The Chargers, they didn't play they didn't play Justin Herbert at all. They didn't play Keenan Allen. They didn't play a couple of other key players because they're focusing on week one. They didn't do that from the jump. Washington played their starters in week one. They played their starters in week two. Uh, some, some most of the starters who was who was available. Uh, they played them in week one and week two. So if they didn't look good in week one and week two, why the hell are they not playing in week three? There's there's plenty of players who played throughout the throughout the uh, the the season excuse me throughout the league in week three and people who are playing in on Sunday today as we're recording this there are plenty of people who are going to be playing at least the first half some of them are going to be playing at least a couple series some of them are going to be playing at least a quarter uh their starters and and we're talking about oh uh uh Washington I'm I'm cool as long as they get out healthy uh, or Rivera's talking about I didn't want my players to get hurt. All right, cool. But guess what? I think you're doing your team a disservice because if you think about that mindset throughout the entire preseason, then you could have did exactly what the Chargers did. He's a new coach. He's a new coach. He doesn't even he hasn't even seen them players in game, the, the key players in game, and and he's not starting them at all. He's not even playing them. So if you had that mindset with some of these guys who were who are already proven veterans like Ryan Fitzpatrick, and you want to preserve him for the regular season, why the hell did you start him the first two games? So I, I just I'm I'm I know I'm I'm getting on the rant here, but I'm annoyed because it's a combination of the fact that Ron didn't Ron didn't take this game seriously in terms of getting his starters a little bit more uh in sync together, but also people who are contradicting themselves online. As you all know, I'm on I'm on Twitter, so I see a lot of these things, but it's just so it's so annoying to see people contradict themselves to try and fit a narrative or 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 fight against uh people who actually have legitimate concerns or legitimate opinions that differ from them i i thought the entire franchise embarrassed itself they it, you know um i do blame ron for the same um for the same thing that that jamal said i don't think you can play this game scared you know i look we're just dopes on you know on the internet here but i don't think you can play football scared i don't think you can worry about injury too much you got to play you got to practice and and there's a bye week by the way you know, there's a whole week off f for people to rest up and, and you know, um, if they've got little minor injuries, they've got a week to a, a week to rehab. So I just I don't get it. Um, it would have been one thing if the offense had looked good at all. And, and by the way, you know, newsflash. The two teams they played, you know, the, the Patriots and the Bengals aren't exactly offensive juggernauts either. So it's not like the defense needs work, too. Yeah, the defense got run over. I mean, I realize it was second stringers, but they got run the heck over by the Baltimore Ravens, you know. And so I don't think uh, this defense is ready to become the 85 Bears or anything either. There's open questions and whatnot. So I, I think they definitely needed the work. I don't know what Ron Rivera was thinking, and, and I absolutely think he made the wrong choice. And I also blame the players. So did any of these backup players look energized and motivated to you? No. One or two of them maybe did, but um, as a team, they they didn't at all. They didn't want to be there. They should have forfeit that game and just gone home. Yeah, I Seriously, mean, you made us all watch this garbage, absolute train wreck. You garbage. know, I, I feel like we saw a little bit of something from the offense. At least they were trying. They were failing, but they were trying. But that defense, man, like it it looked like they were sleepwalking most of the day, especially once uh, McIntyre went. Or Troy McTire, whatever, however you pronounce it. Uh, Troy McTire. McTire. Yeah. Once he got hurt, like, he was the one guy who was kind of putting some effort in it, it looked like. Um, it it was very frustrating. Here's what my, I, and I know we'll talk about this more in detail later, but if I'm Rivera and I'm this front office man, I am watching the waiver wire looking at every linebacker who gets cut right now you know, from another team, because you got nothing behind these three starters, and the three starters aren't special, 
you you have three guys who are at least average, you know, players. So has Jamin Davis done anything to impress anyone? Who? No, but I, I give a rookie season. a pass on you know what happened so far. I'm not saying he's a bust. What's the name? But has he impressed anybody? Davis. Davis. Jamin Davis. No. Jamal's just shaking <laughs> Jamal's his head. shaking his head. He, I mean, I was surprised he didn't play. I was I was surprised he didn't play. He needed to. Yeah, I agree. I was surprised. He needs as many reps as he can get, man. He's inexperienced, Mm -hmm. you know. I mean, they drafted him because of his athletic profile more than anything. He was a total unknown before last season. Uh, He needs to play, you know. He's not an experienced – he's not a four-year starter at a major university. He's a one-year, you know, player from Kentucky. Right. You know, guys like that need experience, and I just don't understand. And, and, you know, yeah, the Chargers might have sat sat people. Um, I'm far more confident in Justin Herbert – and the Chargers' offense, than I would be in Washington's offense. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I just I don't understand what what happened yesterday. Yeah, I I said what I needed to say in that that two minute rant. Yeah. Um, I I feel the way I feel. I think I think he did himself a disservice. I'm not going to sit here and like I said, his his decision is his decision, and I respect it. I also have my opinion too. So that's kind of where I'm at with it. He he did what he did. So hopefully, you know, he proves us to be right. And 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 moving forward, at least on the offensive side, because they just they just did not have it together at all in those short short amount of times that they were on the field. No, they really didn't. And you know, uh, and I assume when you said proves us right, you mean proves the team right. You Pro- know, that his, proves his decision to be right. Excuse me. So right, yeah, right. yeah, his proves decision, his decision yeah. to be right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Hopefully, he proves us wrong. <laughs> proves us wrong. <laughs> proves himself <laughs> right. Himself yes. right. <laughs> And he's done that before, sure. you know. We've doubted him in the past, so far be it from us to doubt him. But like Jamal said, I mean, I have my opinion. Right. You know, and you know, maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. I mean, the thing is, I, I, I want to give guys a little bit of leeway this year with preseason now that we're down to three games. And that does shift around a lot of, like, how are you going to approach it? Like, it, we've seen, and we've been seeing this. you need to play more, doesn't it? I mean, I would think so, but, you know, we've seen shifts in preseason philosophy a lot the last few years in general. Sean McVay has been famous for not playing starters for his entire coaching tenure now out in L.A. Like, we, we I think we're going to see over the next few years, depending on how long we stick to this 3-17 and 17 setup, you know, because I think eventually it's going to be 2-18, and 18, but coaches are going to have to figure out, you know, where do you play your starters? When? How much? All that kind of stuff, you know, because that that changes with the number of preseason games. I just think it's one thing if you have a solid, high-performing offense that returns the bulk of the starters. That's one thing. Right. But if you have a totally new offense, which Washington has, essentially, yeah, uh, you just can't expect them to show up on, you know, game one and be ready. You know, yeah. and at peak efficiency. I mean, half your starters are uh, on their first year here uh, on offense. I think if you count it up, it's five out of the 11 guys. So I'm most worried about Curtis Samuel, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, I, he hadn't played at all in the preseason for the, you know, he had his injury and then he was on the coronavirus list. and Or maybe it was one. I can't remember what happened first, but he was on both of those lists all off season. He's, you know, as Mark Bullock said when we on this show months ago, I mean, he's sort of the gadget guy. Um, I think it's difficult to integrate a guy like that into the offense. No, um, practice, and it yeah. sort of makes, yeah, it's kind of makes me nervous about what we're going to see from him on week one. I mean, a traditional wide receiver I can get, things. it's like, okay, go run this route. You know, like that's one thing, but. If you're going to be a guy who runs gadgets and end arounds or whatever, yeah, you need to know what your blocking schemes are going to look like. You got to get familiar with that. He hadn't practiced much yeah. either. This is not just games. He just hasn't had a pre off season basically. Yeah, because of his injury and because of the corona list. Mm-hmm. So I think the um, I think the you know Steve, I know you've definitely been a Hopkins defended Hopkins pretty adamantly, but that that one missed fifty yarder. He, no one can do he he stubbed his toe kicking a ball that, that's not good i'm just telling you all what the stats and what is what is statistical performance is is not what the fans think that's all i'm saying he missed the 55 yarder you know it was really low uh, you know he, i didn't watch it that closely kicked, it was he kicked dirt <laughs> in front of the yeah, ball that's I mean, what it happened. was a bad kick you know he missed yeah. period yeah 
you know, it's as simple as that. But I, all I've ever, I don't, not really defending him necessarily. I just think that he's getting a bad rap from fans who don't know what the hell they're talking about. That's all. I mean, I think I think there's a split between the two. I, I think he he I think he's had a bum rap with certain fans all because of that tie in London years ago. Um, yeah, I mean that's still that's, at, that's at the tone. You see, he was yeah. missing kicks after that too, throughout that yeah, season. But I people th- forget that. I mean. The Bengals kicker missed a kick, a short kick in that game too. It was the Wembley Stadium. Was what it was a hard uh, yeah. environment to kick in. Yeah, you know. Weirdly, no. Um, I, look, that that man had a terrible miss last night. It's point blank. Like I thought that jump was blocked until <laughs> I thought it was blocked until, until they the show pressure. The replay. Yeah, it's yeah, not and blocked. even the post game literally... po- post game pressure. Yeah, he said flat out he 100 percent missed it. It's all on him. Like it mm-hmm. was it was terrible. And I thought it, like you said until the replay, I thought it was blocked. I you honestly, just don't see anything you know, like that. I tend to defend kickers pretty heavily. There, There is something going on with him psychologically or something that I think needs to be get right. So, you know, I won't be shocked if they bring in some competition, you know, during this bye week here because th- I think they might need to just be ready in, in case he doesn't get his mind right. I don't care if they bring competition in for him. I mean, the the um, Beng- uh, Bengals, the Ravens had some kid in there kicking for Justin Tucker. Yeah. You know, so they have a spot. I mean, that's fine. Uh, you know, and I don't really care who the kicker is. <laughs> you know, whoever. All I've ever said is Justin, Justin, Dustin Hopkins' production is not worthy of the hate he receives from this fan base. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. No, I understand that. Look, kickers are – always going to get more blame than they probably need. You know? Yeah. It, it's just a weird thing in football. Kickers always get blamed for little things. You know? It, <laughs> George Allen always used to say, too, that if you blame the kicker, you don't know anything about football. So that's why I'm always hesitant, to. Well, I mean, it's fair to blame. You know, if the kicker's not performing and not making good kicks and good kickoffs and the punter's not punting right, I mean, it's fair to criticize right. them for sure. And I get it, you, you know? Um I just think that um, Hopkins' stats aren't worthy of the hate. No, no, no. That's all I'm saying. Um, the – yeah, the – okay, so let's talk about this defense because, man, oh, man, they they didn't force a punt until at the end of the fourth quarter. They just let themselves get steamrolled all game long here, didn't they? That was uh, that was one more. I, I, I get they got two sacks on Lamar Jackson. Which is nice, you know, that your number th- twos and threes. Well, also can do that. remember that the two sacks were mostly because they weren't running Lamar. Right. Lamar was clearly told to stay in the pocket, more or less. And so I don't know how much credit I'd give those sacks. I don't think those sacks would have happened in a regular season mm-hmm. game. I, well, that's. I mean, that's a good um, theory, and I, I don't. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't even have. I wouldn't even disagree with you on that. Um, cause I mean, they did re- look relatively easy in the sense it's like, oh, y'all actually put hands on Lamar Jackson. Like that's kind of my thought when I saw the sacks. So, <laughs> um, it, it would make sense for him to stay in the pocket in that regard, uh, or try to, I don't know, like instinctively, inst- instinctually, instinctively, instinctively, <laughs> I would imagine Jamal's having a rough morning. I would imagine him trying to like play his own game. In a sense, but sure. you know it is what it is. Um, the defense, fellas, kind of annoyed me because we talk about a lot, of, and this is some. This is this annoys me because we we try to diminish this thing to just being a preseason game. But leading up into a preseason game like this, where we talk about how much depth we got and things like that, <laughs> all of it, like all of a sudden we get smoked thirty-seven to three. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh, this is just the third preseason game. Why are y'all worried about this? Well, do you guys remember heading into this game or heading into the the, the year, we was bragging about how much depth we got? Well, we got so much depth. How the hell did we give up 300 yards in the first half? If we got so much depth, how the hell did we give up 300 yards in a half and allowed Mm -hmm. one person to score five touchdowns, be, be, be accountable for five touchdowns? He threw four and ran for one. How the hell did that happen if we got all this depth that y'all are talking about? Clearly, it exposed the differences between Baltimore and Washington. Um, and I'm not taking this in the sense of saying uh, uh, we're in trouble. But what I'm saying is when you want to compare depth, uh, Baltimore is miles ahead of us in terms of depth. 
compared to where we are. So if you think we had depth, uh, we may have depth in some places, but collectively, we are not there yet. Just plain and simple. No, I, I think this really does, you know, I think your point's right on. Th- this team is not, I mean, they have some depth, like you said. Uh, you, you look at defensive tackle. We are really deep at defensive tackle. You look at... Except they get steamrolled. Hmm? Except they got steamrolled by a good team. Yeah, well, that I depth. mean... That's what J- Jamal's point is, right? I mean, we say yeah, there's depth, but then you face a good team. Yeah, they looked okay against the Bengals, who were historically awful. Uh, the Patriots, who are a shell of themselves. and Yeah, but only one guy but, was in there at all who's going to make this roster at defensive tackle, and that was Tim Settle. Matt Ionitis wasn't playing. Uh, Payne and Allen weren't playing. So your, three of your top four guys were out. And no one, And let's be honest, a, other than those four, none of these guys are making the roster at defensive tackle. They were also, for, what, three-fourths of the game, facing Baltimore's backups. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt about that. And they got crushed. Yeah. Uh, so, I, but I'm just saying, like, there's groups where we're okay. You know, yeah. when it comes down to it, most of the defensive tackle starters were not playing. You know, and safety, I think we're okay at. Although, I, I don't, I didn't pay atten- enough attention who was actually playing safety the whole game, honestly. Well, Jeremy Reeves was in there. Mm. Uh, you know, I did notice Reeves, and like you, I got bored with this game fast. Yeah, it was tough you know, to was pay attention to. It was just... this. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, it really um, was. It was I, I do agree with you, Alex. Uh, just to clarify, um, I do agree. Like we do got depth in some spots. Uh. But it's, it's a few spots. It's not yeah. everywhere. You're yeah, right. that's, yeah, that's where I was getting at. We got a depth in some spots. Uh, I, I, I like defensively, obviously, the defensive line. That's an easy answer. Um, secondary, uh, we have versatility, which I actually respect. Um, I just don't trust any anybody past cornerback five, um, which right now, we don't know until the roster cuts happen, but right now we have Troy Abke at, at least number six, um, number five. Mm-hmm. Um, Tory McTire, I, I would, I would like to believe, um, but Tory, even before he got hurt, he got beat down the sideline a couple times too, which kind of, I'm not even going to cite it. He got beat down at least one time that I vividly remember. Um, and, and it kind of exposes yep. his limitations in a sense. Like we, we like his coverage in those short yarded situations, but Baltimore tested that man deep, uh, one mm-hmm. time. And I think the dude ran away from him. Yeah. Ran away from him. And I think it was either an overthrow or a drop. It wasn't something that McTire did. Uh, that that actually resulted in the pass being incomplete, but he got beat. Um, so it kind of exposes our our limitations. But I do like the depth in terms of versatility. Uh, you got three cornerback, I mean three safety that you can trust in uh, deep thir- deep thirds or deep uh, being. I don't know about the single high safety. I don't know only except for Bobby McCain. I can probably trust, but uh, Landon Collins. Uh, and then Cameron Curl can play a couple other spots too. So uh, you have yeah. the versatility at secondary. I like the defensive line for obvious reasons. The linebackers is top heavy. I don't trust anybody outside of the starting three, um, which is unfortunate, but that's kind of where we're at defensively. I don't even trust the starting three that much at linebacker yet, honestly. That's that's uh, fair. I mean, that is really you know, that's really fair. Uh, I, well, sure. Uh, you know, like John Bostic is an average NFL linebacker. Right. Uh, Cole Holcomb is a young guy who's getting better, but I don't think he's going to be. We're not talking about an All Pro here, and Jamin Davis is an inexperienced rookie, sure. so I don't know. I don't trust them. I don't put that as a top, one of the top in linebacker groups in the league by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, yeah, you know, and sure, uh, yeah, obviously the defensive line is the the strength well, of the of the defense. It, I mean, clearly, obviously, it is. But, but, you but know, if we're really talking depth, what do we got be- behind Sweat and Young at the? Outside we got a team that got run over by one of the best um, running teams in the yeah. league. That's what that's what we got. Yeah. And I've always said I, I think that the, the defensive front four and front seven as a whole are better pass defenders than they are run defenders. Mm-hmm. I, they have not been elite against in the run, in my view at least. And I think they get beat one on one more often against the run than they do against the pat against uh, in pass defense. Yeah. So I think they need help in that regard. And yesterday did nothing to obviously to dissuade me of that notion. No, no, it did. It really didn't. Um, you know, I, I don't really know what else we can say about it. You know, the one thing that irked me to no end with those backup linebackers, I'll just say, is they kept on getting beat to the, you know, 
front side of the play over and over in like the shallow crossing routes. You know, all those big plays that <laughs> the Ravens had, it was a, like a 5-10 yard pass to the right side and no linebacker was there. You know. <laughs> well, they did go deep a whole They line. did go I mean, deep too. Baltimore I, was practicing yeah. going deep. <laughs> they 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 went deep a lot too, but they just got exposed. They, it was like it was well, like they were playing with 10 guys and there wasn't a linebacker. Tyler Huntley missed a ton of those passes deep. A lot of those would have been completed. You yeah. know, if the pass had been more on target. Yeah. Um, anything else on the defense for you guys? Mm-mm. Um, I don't know, man. I mean, like you, I mean, who stuck out yesterday? I mean, I guess Jordan Kunachik. Is that what we decided? Yeah, sure. I guess, uh, you know, by default, somebody had to stick out. But beyond that, I thought nobody, you know, did I mean, much. I mean, David Bada showed up and you know, made a play. I noticed him, mm-hmm. but beyond that, I mean, uh, you know, I, I think um, Shaka Tony continues to prove that he's Chase Young's backup. We'll get to roster. Yeah. I'll shut up. We'll get to we, we, in terms of yesterday. Really, Kunachik and defense, the only one I guess that remotely stuck out in my head. Yeah, I was gonna mm-hmm. say just they suck. They suck. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> there you go. That's a I better mean, way to say it. We're not gonna dig too deep. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say that. we're not gonna dig too deep, too deep in a. a a team that was starting their third stringers for the most part, third and fourth stringers uh, in the, the last preseason game. So it is what it is. It sucks. Uh, Khalid Hudson didn't stand out, uh, who was actually supposed to have a more prominent role with this defense, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Um, if he stood out, you know, that could be the bright spot of that defense, but um, at least for last night. But it is what it is. Um, they suck. It was awful. <laughs> yeah. At least we know Tressway is in regular, rounded in a regular season. I, I'm worried he. I'm worried he's tired now, <laughs> after that. Many <laughs> he's months. wearing himself out. Yeah. <laughs> um, and on offense, nothing really stands out. I, I think the people who are all terrible. Kyle Allen like needs to start. They just need to sit down, though. I'll say that. Who ever thought that? You see a handful I mean, of people who thought that Kyle Allen's the best guy on this team. Blah 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 blah. Was it like Ron Rivera wearing a mustache and a funny hat? No, you said no. That? I don't think it's Ron Rivera people necessarily. I think there's Kyle Allen people out there. They need to calm down. He he he's not. Kyle Allen's help, a he's either not healthy or this is just what he is. Well, I got news for people. Taylor Heineke's a backup too. Yep. I, I mean, I'm sorry, but the, and apologies to Robbie Duncan who may be listening to this. Uh, I mean, but Taylor Heineke's a backup, and so I, I you know. Ryan Fitzpatrick is the only one who's a starting quality cornerback, a quarterback, and we know what his issues are. Yeah. So, I mean, I think Washington has – I mean, if you think about the NFC East as a whole, what do we have? We've got Dak Prescott, who if he's healthy, and that's a huge open question. Right. If he's healthy, you're talking about all pro-level performance there. Daniel Jones, first-round player. I mean, the Giants have stuck with him. They've dramatically gotten – more talented on offense. They brought in a couple of receivers. They drafted the names escaping me. They drafted a, 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 um, a talented receiver in the first round to help him. Um, and then you've got, I, I mean, I, I think the only one that's on our level is probably the Eagles. Cause I don't think much of Jalen hurts as an NFL quarterback. I mean, they just traded for Garner Minshew. So, you know, yeah, but, and Garner Minch, who Garner Minchu who has performed. Yeah, so uh, so when hurt, I, my gut tells me with the Eagles, you know, if Hurts is not playing well by midseason, they'll just make that switch. Probably, yeah, probably mm-hmm. so. And so then, do, do you really? What do you rank Washington in, in for quarterbackers in the NFC East? I probably rank him fourth. Yeah. I, I I don't think that's unreasonable. I don't have no comment, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is a talking show, Jamal. You have to have a comment. I. Put it this way, um, I'm just in this. I'm just in a, a mindset. I don't know, bro. Like, for me, all right. So, where'd you say you said you had him fourth, Steve? Yeah, and, fourth. With the addition of Garner Minshew on the Eagles, I'd put him fourth. Ooh, I I just feel like there's a there's still a mystery behind Taylor. And obviously, Kyle Allen, we know, we kind of figure out who he was. It's interesting, because I know this is a talking show, Steve, so I'll just say it. It's just interesting, because there's a lot of people who believe Kyle Allen is actually the safest choice 
out of all the three. Um, who knows how productive he can be, but he's the safest in the sense that they feel like he's a mixture of Taylor Heineke, but also uh, a, a, could be as aggressive uh, as Ryan Fitzpatrick is. Um, what does that mean when, it, when you talk about collectives and backup quarterbacks throughout the league? Nobody knows, but I think when you're wrapped up in your own bubble, the Washington bubble, um, you kind of tend to believe that you have the, one of the best backup quarterback situations in the NFL without really truly assessing uh, other backup quarterback situations. Uh, I believe that any team that has Chase Daniel on their team is probably one of the top backup quarterback situations in the NFL, regardless of where he's at. I think he's a he's a quality backup, and you don't really expect much out of your backups to like start a thousand games a year. But if you need him to come and play two or three, guess who's going to hold it down for you? You know Chase Daniel will. But can you say that the same thing for Taylor Heineke? Uh, and when you're accounting for everything, no, you can't because you don't even know if he's going to make it out of the first game healthy. So you don't know. You, you, you can't say that you have one of the top quarterbacks in the top backup situations in the NFL or believe that you have that when you're not accounting for everything. And also, you only seen him play two games. So I just think that uh, I I don't think it's fourth. Cowboys, Cowboys, uh, Cowboys is definitely fourth. They're terrible. Um Eagles, I, I, res- I respect, <clears throat> sorry, I respect Gardner Minshew. I actually don't even know who the backup is for New York. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. It's I, I'm looking it up as you're talking. It's Mike Glennon. Oh, Mike Glennon, is the, um, the guy who got a second life after that terrible experience in Chicago. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, I would say he, I, I would say if it's not, if it's not third, it's second for him, for them, but they're definitely not top. Um, but I was, I would say we're, we're somewhere in second. And that's second in our division. If not, if not second, I think we're first. But when we're talking about throughout the league, and you're talking about 27 other teams, if my math is right, 27, 26, they're not. They're probably maybe on the edge of top 10, uh, somewhere between maybe like eight to 10. Or but you're just talking about backup quarterbacks. We're also adding in starters here. Yeah, I was talking about the quarterback room as a whole. Yeah. That's what my ranking. Yeah, was. but. I, I, I get it. I just feel like Fitzpatrick, I would still keep them in that somewhere between, like, collective. I was I would keep them, like, 10 to 15. Um, but if you're asking where uh, Fitzpatrick ranked by itself, um, you're probably at, like, middle of the pack, 15, 17. But I think the strength of the, the, the quarterback room, it kind of bolsters them in, in a sense that uh, it won't be a huge drop-off, but... I wouldn't sit here and say that Heineke or, or Allen can do as good as Chase Daniel or other quarterbacks that I'm not thinking of right now, like Tyrod Taylor. Well, he's starting now, but he was a backup at one point. But you, you get what yeah. I'm saying. Like some of these guys who uh, were in position. Eddie Bridgewater. Yeah. Uh, Drew Locke, I don't know where he's at, but he's had starting experience. Like I know he got benched. I'm saying I don't know where he's at skill-wise, but he's had starting experience. So he's going to be backing up Teddy Bridgewater in, in, in Denver. So there's there's plenty of other. Oh, P.J. Walker in Carolina. Like he was amazing in the XFL for the short time that he was playing, and he looked good in preseason. Um so he's he if he had the opportunity and and to to play if Sam down Sam Darnold goes down, then you don't even know like that's that's another area too. So I don't know. I, I would say top. I, I would just, say ten to twelve, uh, uh, collectively. But Fitzpatrick by itself, he's not top twelve. I, yeah, I mean, I'd put our quarterback room at just roughly in the in the league. I'd put it. Somewhere below, uh, you know, sixteen to twenty, I guess. And my pro- you know, th- th- my problem is that what we're going to see from Ryan Fitzpatrick are moments of excitement coupled with moments of awful, because that's what he's been his entire career. He say he's been streaky, he's been great at times, he's been awful at other times. I don't necessarily think I don't have any reason to suspect it's going to be different here, you know. And that's I guess that's why I'm downgrading fits a little bit is because of that. I think when you iron him out and you average it all out, he's going to be somewhere in the middle, uh, you know, but it's going to be moments of great and moments of terrible yeah. to get to the middle. That's, that's what I think is going to happen with Fitzpatrick. The the hope for that. Yeah. I, I, I think people need to temper their expectations with Fitzpatrick. You know, he's where he is for a reason or he's been what he has been for a reason. Um, all right, so Steve, I know you wanted to make some roster predictions. I, we're not going to go and do a oh, yeah. whole fifty-three man roster. Yes, that's not. I think maybe we'll do that next week when we're. Well, I guess they'll have cuts by then, you know. But 
Yeah, no, today, if we're going to do roster predictions, it needs to be done. I'm not saying we need to go through every position. No. no. I mean, it would take four hours to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not going to do that. You know, but no, I'm, I'm just talking about some key 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 position places, groups, key yeah. guys who've made it through this preseason, guys who might have played themselves off the team, that kind of thing. All yes. right. Okay, um, why don't we just kind of go round table? People can spout names that they think unexpectedly are either getting cut or making it, and we can go from there. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I want to start with the running back. Okay. Because <laughs> I think this is interesting, and I think it totally depends on how many players Washington's going to mm-hmm. keep. Because I think at this – before yesterday, I was going to say that Jared Patterson's clearly played his way on the roster – but he didn't look good yesterday, but it was also the offensive line was horrible. So I'm not sure it's his fault. And so what my roster prediction that I published on our website prior to the game right. was that they keep three on the active roster, send Jonathan Williams to the practice squad, and cut Peyton Barber. After yesterday, I'm not so sure that happens. Um, but I still think they're going to keep three. So I'm less confident, but I, I'm, I'm going to stick with my cut Peyton Barber and keep Jarrett Patterson, but I'm, I'm less sure about it than I was. Okay. Uh, um, Jamal, what you got thoughts on those guys? Yeah, only, cause, like so the surprise part is going to be hard for me. I, I, I would have to sit down and actually take some time to think about it. But there was one thought about the running back position, so I figured I'd just follow up. Um, I actually think because I agree with Steve, like it wasn't his best, it wasn't his best out in Patterson last night. A couple drops. Um, didn't really do much in the run game in terms of like his decision making. Uh, it wasn't necessarily as cl- uh, crisp and consistent like it was uh, the first two games. Um, I I think that he made it two things. He made it uh, another conversation, or he re he reopened the conversation of allowing four four running backs to be on this roster. I think Patterson's still gonna make the team, but I think that his the the decision to keep Peyton um, has become more loud um and and more prevalent and 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 with that being said um i do think that patterson kind of also added a variable and and what i mean by that is he played really good on special teams and he played well in pat he he did well in pass protection um i I guess it's called a wing position which i never even knew that the title of it but he played the wing on special teams punt coverage um mm-hmm. and he looked really good in the the two snaps two snaps that I saw him play on special teams uh and then pass protection he really didn't struggle at all like he had no bad it came down to him catching the passes and actually seeing the field uh with his vision um and that's kind of where I think he he kind of messed up um so Patterson and Barber I think the surprise is actually they they end up keeping four as we all thought that they may keep three I think they keep four now yeah, I'm actually. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's a fair opinion. I think. I'm kind of with Jamal on that too. I wouldn't be shocked at all if they keep all four of those guys, uh, because let's be honest, Barber has one skill, and that is that he can pick up a yard most of the time when you need a yard. You know that, and we haven't seen Patterson do it. We haven't seen Gibson do it this preseason. So I'm fine with. All right, let's keep Barber on for now, until we can prove that one of these other guys can take on that job. It, it it does make a little sense. I mean, it makes sense, but the problem is, of course, you know, you keep a an extra running back, and you know, that position has to come from another group. Sure, you can't keep three quarterbacks, three running back, or four running backs, and uh, I mean, seven wide receivers, and it's just not the way it works. And so that's why I think they may have to make a hard choice and keep three, you know, not four. That's so. That's that. Um, I I like to go tight in next because that seems to be a source of never ending, of uh, never ending entertainment among the fans. Sure. You know, with Samus Reyes and everything. But look, I've seen no indication from Samus Reyes that he's in any way ready to be on the roster. So I think he goes to the practice squad and they keep somebody like Caleb Wilson, who's at least played. Uh, you know, I just don't think Samus Reyes is ready for the active roster. I uh, I I'll be honest, I disagree completely i think that none of these other guys have shown anything that make me think they're worth keeping uh you know over him Uh, you know oh so now i was gonna say i i I agree with alex on this one um this samus Reyes is in a position where uh excuse me let me actually restart that one the coaches are in a position where they can't really afford to let samus Reyes go 
And, and what I mean by that, it has nothing to do with his actual ability to, to be a receiver or anything like that. But I've harped on this after that first game. If he's your most physical blocker and you're aware of that, you've seen it in film, what what makes you think that there's going to be there's not going to be any other suitors out there who's like, all right, we can snatch him on the waiver wire. We can develop him. Um, and when it's his time to step out there and actually be a productive uh, tight end from from uh, both the passing and running perspective, then, you know, his time will come. I think Washington is, is going to be forced to have the same conversation uh, about the running back, just like the running back position. Like, are you going to keep four tight ends or are you going to keep three? Uh, and, and what are these three or four going to do for you? Uh Moving forward, obviously they cut Hemingway, but Ricky Seals Jones, mm-hmm. um, like they may see that value in him too, like in, in whichever way. So I think they need to keep Samus, and the conversation is going to come down to if they want to keep a fourth or not. But Samus is definitely in the conversation because there's nobody on that team who is as physical right now as, uh, as Samus, like when you talk about Logan or, or John. Well, it's a more entertaining story if you guys are right and I'm wrong. So I'm rooting for that. I'm rooting for you guys to be right. I'm rooting for me to be wrong. Um, I think the other one that's worthy on offense to talk about is wide receivers because I thought it was very interesting yesterday. Um, if you th- the, 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 the last couple spots are very interesting because what we clearly saw is the team pushing Dax, giving Dax Milne every opportunity to prove himself. I didn't see Cam Sims on the field at all. I, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but I didn't see him. I know he didn't have any stats. Usually, and usually when you see a a player not play in the last preseason game, it means that they're locked in. He's on the yeah, sh- yeah. And so if you're locked in, you think about it here. De- I'm going alphabetically. Deami Brown is locked in. Terry McLaurin is locked in. Adam Humphreys is locked in. Curtis Samuel's locked in. If Cam Sims is locked in, that's five. Yep. And there's one more at most. Maybe not even one more, assuming they, they're not keeping seven receivers. No, no, no. Mm-mm. So that's one more, and who is it? You know, is it Genny Golden got a ton of time? Dax Millen got a ton of time? They're different players. I mean, I think this De- – DeAndre Carter is he could be the punt returner. This is a very interesting back-of-the-roster group to, to, to discuss. It, it really is, and, you know, it, it's tricky. Uh, by the way, Jamal, I, we know you have to go soon, uh, so I, I'll let you – we should actually let you go first if you have any thought on the receiver. Uh, I think AGG uh, stood out. Uh, when you stack good performance with another good performance uh, for him, it, it doesn't have to be outstanding. But given where he's come from, when you parlay performances up uh, on top of each other, that's a really good sign for you. Um, and, and as you can see in this preseason game, it was him and Milne who they, who they targeted often. Um, and, and both of them showed up. AGG, I think, did have one drop, which kind of kind of hurts his stock um, because he had he's had I wouldn't say questions or issues, but I just say he's had those random moments where you would have thought like those simple passes thrown to him. He could catch it like I would put it that way. Um, so those he had those type of moments before. But I think AGG has, has locked up that six spot. Um, there was a question yesterday as to if somebody's going to snag snag Milne. Uh, if he's cut, and my question is, well, I'm I'm pretty sure you can find like five or six other guys out there who gets cut after this after this week, just just as similar to Dax Milne. So um, I don't know. I mean, both of them are draft picks, but I, I do think AGG has made it, um, and and he's he's shown the ability to make those those catches that we brought him in from Liberty to do. Yeah, I kind of agree with you because I, I also don't think Washington's ready to cut a fourth-round draft pick from a year ago. Yeah. I mean, you know, Jamal brings up an interesting point. Dax Milne is kind of a – there are a dozen or two of those in the league at any given moment as free agents. You know, average yeah. height, average weight, not an elite speedster. You know, he's just kind of a natural slot guy. You know, you can go find that. That's not hard. You know, and – I mean, I know our friend Rick Snyder thinks that Milne's on the roster – but I just I kind of agree with Jamal and Alan. I don't really see how I mean, from a pure number standpoint. I don't see how. how the, only, the only thing he's done that would make me think he could beat AGG is that he was returning punts the, in these preseason games and did okay. I just think it. Yeah, I think it would be different if if Cam Sims had played yesterday and they clearly put him in competition with those other right. two guys. But just the fact that he didn't play at all. 
tells me that he's on. I, I just don't think they would cut somebody, not give him a chance to play over the likes of like Tony Brown and stuff. Right. So I, I, if you just, it, it, I just don't see all. I just don't see a spot for Milne. I just, I don't know. I think Rick's wrong. Yeah, I don't see a spot what for him. I um, yeah, I, I don't think that. Even though I like Carter as a punt returner, like I don't think they'll keep him on just for that. I think AGG locked up that last spot. So. Yeah, it kind of begs the question about what you do about punt returner because I do think he's the best punt returner. Oh, absolutely. You know, on the team. Yeah, I, that's going to be a hard one to figure out. You know, are you especially with Steven Sims gone? There's, I mean, not that Sims was any great shakes at right. it, but at least he was. He's the one who did it last year, and so if you don't keep Carter, and Sims is gone, and Dax Milne doesn't, and make Isaiah it, well, Wright, the, the only other guy returner? who returned punts now, like, I, I, and we just, cons, cons, yeah, and you know. If these six guys are the receivers, that means right as a practice squad or, or a cut. Right. Somebody has to be – somebody has to return kicks. Is it Adam Humphreys? Are they going to risk the slot receiver, starting slot receiver in it? Maybe. Um, but he hadn't done it all off season that I've yeah, seen. The only least. other guy is to then – that's what Patterson's here for. And I know they tried him on a kick, and he did really well. So, But I didn't see him do a punt. Yeah, I, we haven't seen it. No. Mm-mm. So it makes me wonder if DeAndre Carter is the sixth, you know, or, or, or receiver. Or maybe they do keep seven, you know. But but Carter is a punt return only. I don't yeah. know. I mean, it's it's that. I, this is why I wanted to bring it up because I think this is a very interesting group, and we'll learn Tuesday what they do. Obviously, um, Jamal, are you heading out? Uh oh shoot. Um yeah yeah I actually okay. didn't repeat the time. Uh, all right, fellas. So next. Saturday. Yep. Right. We'll talk to you next Saturday. Okay. All right. Cool. Well, y'all be safe. Yep. Uh, and I'll talk to y'all. All right. You too. All right. All right. All right. Um. Okay. So that's the other group. I think that's super interesting is corner. Yeah. We we have some unexpected competition there. Honestly, I didn't think it would be, uh, as kind of up in the air as it is, at this point for the. Yeah. I think we know Jackson Fuller, and why am I blanking on the. St. Juice, they're all locked in, right? Yes, but those three guys. So, are they going to keep four? They only keep four. You know, who's going to be? Are they maybe they could keep five. I mean, you know, it's an open question. Right. right. I mean, I'll be honest. To me, McTire, you know, if you're playing meritocracy rules, he's your next guy up. Has yeah. to be. Has to be. He's outplayed everybody. And yes, he had a concussion yesterday. Apparently, or they're evaluating for a concussion. Against, but they, they also have. Remember, there's another week to go, right. and it's pretty short sighted. Unless his concussion is just horrible, in which case it could put him on pup or something and save a spot. Um, but if it's a minor concussion, I don't think that plays any part in his roster decision. Right. Right. Well, and you know the number that they keep also depends on the number of safeties they keep. You yes. know because. The, the problem to me with that group, you know, and how it kind of impacts the cornerback market, we spent a high round pick on uh, Forrest out of Cincinnati, right? I haven't seen anything from him this preseason that makes me think, if you if you were just saying, you know, these are our best guys, he's not on that list. You know, he... I agree. But he was a fourth round pick or a fifth round pick, you know... Are you just yeah, going to let that guy I walk? Fifth, I believe. Or are you, uh, do you risk trying to put him on the practice squad and hope no one snags him? You know? That's why I wanted to bring this group yeah. up. Because those are very legitimate and good because questions. Because I agree. when it comes to safeties, yeah, four Colin, good, Collins is a good guy. McCain's a good guy. Curl's a good guy. I think you probably need to keep Everett around or Apke. One of them's got to stay around because you need special teamers. And they're, they're your better special teamers. Even though I'm not, I don't love Apke... He's an okay gunner, so you know, not great, just okay. Um, I, they were clearly giving him a chance to compete against right. the Ravens, and Everett he played has a lot sat out most game. of the preseason. It felt like. I don't think they're going to get rid of Everett. I think he's too valuable in special teams. Mm-hmm. You know, they they moved Apke to corner for a reason, and one is he sucks at safety, but the other reason is he's just by numbers, sheer numbers wise, he just wasn't going to make but, it. We're definitely talking about those four safeties. It's a question of, are you willing to let Forrest go to the practice squad and maybe lose him? Uh, or do you keep, you know, an extra cornerback? Like, uh, yeah. you know, maybe you want to keep, uh, not Bob, 
Well, Jimmy, Jimmy Moore Moreland, would be one, yeah. Revis. Danny Johnson, right. you know, is a guy we haven't talked about a lot. Right. But, yeah, I mean, Derek, the idea of putting a fifth-round pick on the practice squad, I mean, it's a tough thing. Yeah. That's a risky yeah. thing, rather. Not a tough thing. It's a I risky mean, they did thing. it before with so Matt Ioannidis, and it worked out great for him. Yeah. But. I mean, I don't think, if you just by a pure meritocracy standpoint, I don't think Derek Forrest deserves to be on the active no. roster. And, by the way, do you consider Jeremy Reeves a so- corner or safety? He's listed as a DB. I consider him a safety. Okay. So I would put – I have – my roster chart that I've mm-hmm. done, which I need to move Apke to corner, but I'm not going to do that until after the cuts happen tomorrow but or uh, – Monday. Tuesday. Yeah. But, yeah, I, because I have to separate him somehow, um, I put Reeves as a okay. safety. Sure. I, you know, he – when you look at the team's website, they will list guys as like DBs when they're not sure. He's one of those guys. Yeah, but I separate him away. I separate him for salary cap right, purposes. Right, right, right. You know he's got to go somewhere, so. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so yeah, I mean, in my final roster prediction that I published Monday, I had him taking ten defensive mm-hmm. backs, or not taking, keeping ten defensive backs, which is a lot. Granted, because that means five corners, five safeties. Um. But again, I mean, yesterday is so bad. I, I mean, I just. Yeah. Yesterday kind of shook my view of. Yesterday, I, what I mean by yesterday is the Ravens game on Saturday. Sort of shook my view of these back of the roster guys because, like you said, Alex, I mean, no one showed this, any effort. The depth, n- no, no, no. McTire did, and he went out. Right. Beyond that, all these guys look like bums. Yeah. So you know, and I know I don't think of football the way most people do because you know I like special teams and I care about actually having good. If you're considering that as a factor. Reeves is getting in. He he's probably been the best special teamers all preseason in terms of all right. He's not a punter turner, but in terms of gunners and coverage and all stuff. Well, I also just I also just get the sense that they the, the coaching staff trust him for. I think reason. so too. So he he would make it if I were making the roster, and and, so, and yeah. So if you think through it, then you got Collins and Curl and Reeves right. on the uh, on the and Everett. That's four right. Right, and there. then you got to throw in McCain because you know he's that. I forgot yeah. about him. Yeah, so there's there five go. safeties. What are you yeah. gonna do? <laughs> well, well, you could. Yeah, that's yeah. it. So, yeah, I mean, the only people left are Forrest and Cole Luke. I mean, so yeah, I mean, I just don't. I don't know how you keep Derek Forrest on there. I don't roster. either. I honestly don't know how you keep him on. I, I like no. you know. Um, Danny Johnson, I think he's been a good player for them for a few years, but I think he's at the end of the road. How does he make it? Well, let's think about it. So, corners, Fuller, Jackson, St. Juice, they're your three that are roster locks. Tory McTire, McTire's a roster lock, unless he's really hurt. Right. I, he, he, he earned himself a spot, let's be honest. Yes. So that's four, to. which so means you're at nine. Are, are you going to make it ten? Right, and so if they keep – well, that's what I predicted just numbers-wise. But if they keep ten – they don't. That doesn't mean I'm yeah. right. They could only keep nine, but if they keep ten, the competition is Danny Johnson, Jimmy Moreland, Stephen, uh, Lyndon Stevens, and Daryl Roberts. Right. Now, I don't think Lyndon Stevens and Daryl Roberts have really shown enough to just. No, it's between Danny spot. Johnson and Jimmy Moreland. Jimmy Moreland, right? And so if Danny Johnson is a punt returner, he's never done it, but he he has kick returns. Somebody has to punt re- return punts. Right. Someone has to do those jobs. You know. I, yeah. I, and. So, I don't know who's going to do it right now. Jimmy Moreland's a better corner than Danny Johnson. I think we can say that, but probably you know Jimmy Moreland. And I've never really seen him stand out on special teams. So no, me neither. So uh, that's why I want to bring this yeah. group up because I think it's a it's very a very. I, I would lean towards Moreland. I think he provides more as a defender than Johnson does. As right now, he's just a kick returner, and I think he's been replaced by <laughs> Patterson. So. Yeah, and and the other thing is, I think Johnson is we, you know, he's tiny, yeah. uh, and uh, more, not that Moreland's a big dude either. Moreland's small too, but he's a little bit bigger than Johnson, which I think bodes in his favor. I mean, he's listed at five ten. Johnson's listed at five nine. I don't know if Johnson's really five yeah. nine. I don't know if Moreland's he's really five ten. You know, you never know with any of these. Yeah, no. <laughs> but no. Le- le- universally, one is an inch taller or so. You know. Yes. Which helps. Yes. I mean, an inch is. I mean, it's not a huge deal, but I think that works. That's a point in Moreland's favor. Is my right. Point. Right. 
You know, I, I I would lean towards Moreland, but this again all depends on how many safeties and are you keeping ten versus yeah. nine in the backfield, uh, and you Absolutely. know he, the reason why I'm willing to keep five safeties, Steve, to kind of transition into the uh, the most important thing. There are not six linebackers worth keeping on this roster right now. I would rather keep more safeties than linebackers with the group you got because. Uh, other than the starting three, you could cut every one of these guys, and I'd be okay with it at this point. <laughs> Th- that's how bad they've I played mean, in preseason. They haven't yeah. been good. There's no doubt. I mean, look, there's currently nine linebackers: mm-hmm. Bostic, Mayo, Joe Walker, Davis, Holcomb, Hudson, Kunichek, and Jared Norris. My my pre Ravens game prediction was Bostic, Davis, Holcomb, Mayo, Hudson, Kunichek. Mm-hmm. I thought Kunechik at least showed up, looked like he cared against the Ravens. Cleek Hudson has done nothing ever. Uh, you know, David Mayo, they have to have a backup who's played. Right. You know, so, I mean, David Mayo is almost kind of by default in, it seems to me. Um, but, yeah, I don't I, – none of them inspire confidence. No, none sure. of them inspire confidence. I mean, Hul- not Holcomb. Uh, Hudson, to me, was at least – like he, when they drafted him, they said he was kind of drafted to be this one thing, right? That like edge rusher, linebacker, and they didn't really use him like that in preseason. So that could be part of why he looked so bad. But, um, you know, I, I, from what we've seen here, yeah, I'm definitely not in love with any of these guys. I, I said it at the start of the show, I would be watching the waiver wires. I would look at every free agent linebacker who comes up in the next few weeks, and just bring a dude in, you know? I don't care who. I don't care if he's Fair an older enough. guy, a veteran. You need somebody who you can trust to be good depth. I mean, you know, look, they're going to keep Bostic, Davis, and Holcomb, obviously. Those three guys mm-hmm. are in. And so if they keep between, you know, if they keep five or six, I, I mean, I, I think Mayo is in. They have to keep somebody. So I'm going to just say Mayo is in. And so the, in terms of the back couple, I mean, I, I kind of agree with Alex in that they ought to watch the waiver wire. But if they don't, I'd pick Kuna, Kunachik above the other guys. But that's not saying much. It's certainly a weak. It's a weakness. You know what can you say? Yeah. It's there's not a good option on the ro- great option. On the, I'm not in love with the starters. You know, like I said, Davis hadn't shown me anything in the preseason, and Bostic is Bostic. He's okay. Cole Holcomb has his strengths and weaknesses. He's got a cool haircut. I mean, but is he an all pro? No, you know, so it's a weakness. The whole group's a weakness. What can you say? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, anything else you really want to cover? I, I feel like we know what's going to happen at, on the defensive line for the most part. You know, maybe not defensive ends yeah. so much. That's a little iffy, but uh, we're going to keep probably two backup ends. It's just a question of which of these seventh rounders they want to keep. Well, I mean, beyond the starting four. Uh, Shaka Tony's in. You think Shaka? He's okay, played that's entirely, fine. Uh, he, well, he's been the he's been the the entire all three preseason games. He's been Chase Young's backup. Yeah. And so I think he's in. Uh, you know, and then Matt Ioannidis is in, and so that's uh, six. And if they keep you know, last year, they kept nine. So if you keep nine, um, Tim settles in. So that's seven. Yeah. And so really, what you're talking about is who are the other backups? William Bradley King, James Smith Williams, both draft picks. Uh, David Bada is this international program I thing. I Bada gets in, but that that's a fifth defensive end or a defensive tackle, not a defensive end. Yeah, I know, and so that I, yeah, I think some it's an open question. Yeah, it's a li- the last back of a little bit the back of a couple spots are open. It's though. one spot left, maybe. Um, yeah, that's yeah. yeah I think so, so. You know, I think that kind of covers it. Um, other than maybe the debate about if they'll bring in competition for a kicker, which who know we talked about that earlier. Who knows. Well, they could bring a kicker on the practice yeah, squad. They could, like they did last they, they year. They absolutely could. Say, with, with, with an expanded, um, with an expanded practice squad again. There's really no reason not to. Yeah. And so if Hopkins, yeah, if Hopkins is like in his own head and looks like this in the pre in the regular season stuff, yeah, I mean, sure, maybe they do. So I think that's the way to go: is you bring a guy in on the practice that's what squad. I, I would at especially least, especially with the coronavirus yeah. rules and stuff. Because what do you do if Hopkins comes down with it and, you know, it has to if sit out and all that? Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's, I think, all they'll be able to do. All right. Well, I think that kind of covers where we think the roster will be. Um, 
we'll, we'll find, find out. out. We'll, we'll know next week, and we'll be talking about it next week. Uh, that should just about do it for this week's episode. Uh, I'm only wrapping this up, Steve, because I got a text from my wife that I need to go pick her and her sister up and take them to the airport. So We're also over an hour, so we're, we have completed our right. mission. Right. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys. It was good preseason football. No, not really. It wasn't. But it, at least it was a preseason. It was horrible. It existed this year. Yeah. That's an improvement. <laughs> Yep. We will come back at you next week. Hopefully we'll find some fun things to talk about when the team's off. Uh, And we will see you then. Bye.